Welcome to the weekly Digital Automated Rig Technologies updates. We're working remotely as I'm sure you are, and we are leveraging the content, the data, and the information that we have to keep our industry up to date with the latest innovations. We'll be focusing on our jointed pipe injector for the next few weeks. We'll be talking about our testing, our results, our challenges, and our own successes. We're happy to have you here for the journey. Thanks for tuning in. Hello, I'm Andrew Richard, VP of Sales and Business Development with Automated Rig Technologies based in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Today, I'm going to be talking to Harold Miller, VP of Engineering. Harold started his career in 1980, where he worked on the rigs for about nine years before he headed off to university and became a mechanical engineer. Following university, Harold worked for one of the largest land-based drilling contractors for 17 years and then joined up with Automated Rig in 2012. Thanks for joining us today, Harold. Came in person right off of the street. How would you explain what the JPI jointed pipe injector is? Okay, so the jointed pipe injector for the for the layman, it's a machine that'll take pipe and and uh, move it in and out of a well. Um, and for the for the non layman, it would be it's similar to a coiled tubing injector, except that it can handle regular jointed tubing and the connections there you know, that are in the in the in the string. Okay, and and that is the 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 innovation is the fact that we can walk over those couplings, right? Absol- absolutely. So so how does it work? Okay, so uh, basically it's uh, it's got a couple of hydraulic motors that are turning chains, and the difference between this injector and a coil tubing injector is that the the jaws can actually physically open as the uh, as they go. Um, meet up with the, where the connection is on the tubing okay. and just continue through as if it wasn't even there. And those gripper blocks are size dependent then? Absolutely, because they, uh, when the coupling isn't there, they have to uh, grip properly on the, on the tubing. So yeah, they are specifically sized, just like a, say a BOP ram, for example, or a coil tubing gripper block. Yeah. Okay. And I'm seeing the, uh, a lot of the things that you're talking about are, are over your shoulder there on the, the injector that's, that's flipping around on your screen. So how is oh, this different? Different than, than, uh, than injectors that exist out in the field or, uh, different than, uh, well, first we'll talk about the injectors in the field and then we'll move on to applications. So, okay. So, so the, the limiting factor on a, on a regular injector or a coil tubing injector um, is uh, that it can only handle coil tubing. And so it becomes very spe- uh, specific that um, it can only handle a uh, specific size and it has to be of the proper length and, and to be able to reach the bottom of the well and the, and the proper you know, pressure rating and everything like that. And how this one is different in, in, in that little part of it is that it could handle um, you know, pH six tubing or API tubing or, or pretty much any other, uh, tubing connection. So that's the kind of the small picture difference. There's a couple other major differences though, in the way that this one was designed. Number one, it's designed, uh, uh, like if you look at it and you see the structure, it seems very big. Well, there's two reasons for that. The structure is quite heavy because it's designed, um, in order to be able to be supported by the wellhead or from whatever's below the BOPs, but you can also set slips on top of it. So the, the design of, of the current one, which is rated nominally for 100,000 pound lifting, it, you can actually set 200,000 pounds on top of it statically okay. um, in case you want to set slips for whatever reason. The second reason why it's large is uh, the chains are uh, are able to open up to seven and a sixteenth diameter, meaning um, which is basically the same diameter as the of the of the BOPs. So when you need to pass tools through um, uh, the tubing hanger, any of that sort of stuff, it can open up and you can pass uh, you know you can pass any any sort of thing through it. So, so that's, I would say those are the biggest differences between an injector and a coil tubing injector. Okay. Now, the other thing to remember 
is there's really no reason why this injector won't run coil tubing as well. Okay. I see. Um, I see. So from an application standpoint, then what, how is it different? Well, it's, uh, really, really different in that, uh, with coil tubing, you're limited that you can only handle coil tubing. And so, um, coil tubing by nature is one piece. Yeah. And so if you need to bring out 30,000 feet, um, you, you have to have a awfully big reel, uh, and it's, and it's very, very heavy. So to be able to physically move it down the road in one piece is, is very difficult. Um, so, which is Ron mentioned that coil tubing is generally limited to about 22,000 feet and they can go deeper, but the diameter gets smaller and, and in which case then it's, uh, it tends to helically buckle when they try to push it into a horizontal well. Okay. So with, with our injector, since it can handle stick tubing, you can bring as many legal size loads out as you want to bring the regular tubing out. And since you're not limited in that, uh, on that reel, um, you can bring out larger diameters. So, you know, where a lot of the coil guys are running two and a quarter, maybe two and five eighths tubing, yeah. we could run three and a half inch tubing. Three and a half inch tubing in the deep well, number one, it's going to give you a lot better uh, hydraulics. And it's also much, much stiffer. So you can uh, push it a lot easier and get it, uh, get it into the well without it buckling. Um, so two and seven eighths, two and three eighths, three and a half. That's what we're designed for right now. Um, and, uh, and you know, we'll be able to go to various sizes beyond that. Okay. Yeah. Now the difference between, uh, our injector and, uh, let's say hydraulic snubbing yeah. is when you're, you know, a, a typical hydraulic snubbing unit, um, is, you know, very good at, at pulling and, and pushing uh, jointed tubulars, but um, it has to stop every however many feet. So depending on the force they're pushing, especially when they're pushing, they, uh, uh, they are limited by the unsupported length of the, uh, of the tubing. And so they may only be able to push four feet, six feet to a, a maximum of about 10 feet at a time. So they push their 10 feet and then they have to stop and reset the jack and grab another 10 feet and put it down. So that means the string is stopping every 10 feet, let's say, yeah. and then they have to get it moving again every, every time. So, so the, uh, the tubing, um, it has to break friction every time it moves. So, uh, our injector, uh, we're, going to get it so that it can continuously run tubing yep. with the, uh, and Ron touched on the fact that we'll have the tong and the power, uh, power swivel with circulation and all that. So we'll be able to continuously run tubing, meaning we never, ever stop. Um, and we may have to slow down while we make the connection and slow down while we stage the co coupling through the, through the BOPs, but it doesn't come to a clean, complete stop. Okay. It's that, so that should make it much better for, uh, for, for the friction and being able to push further and further into these longer horizontal wells. Okay. So, so, so the advantages that I'm hearing you talk about, uh, f uh, from the piping, from the tubular standpoint are that we can increase the OD, we can lower the cost and increase the, the, the reach, um, uh, with, w with this technology basically. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and we can we can also um, with remote uh, uh, operators, we can move the people into a safe position in comparison to uh, to a, a typical snubbing rig, which has three guys in the basket right on top of the well. We'll be able to have a, a remote operator stand, so the person's out of the out of the danger zone. The yeah, operator as well. Okay. And, and, it, and it's more efficient um, um, or faster to run tubing, even if it's not, um, you know, if it's, if it's moving one foot per second, two feet per second, um, it's faster because you, you're always moving in the correct direction. 
uh, that you want to go, you're either running in or pulling out. Yeah. Where, whereas a snubbing unit, just by its design, half the time its movement is um, is empty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Resetting to regrab. Exactly. Basically. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. and that, and that's what we've we've talked about the theories of constraint versus a lean manufacturing sort of uh, scenario where we're elevating everything to that constraint. Uh, so the other yeah. components can look like they're running actually quite slow, but they're they're actually running at the speed that that constraint uh, is limited at. And the constraint in this scenario seems to be the well. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, you can only you can only run in so fast, or you're going to surge the well, and you can only pull out so fast, or you're going to swab the well, um, and all those types types of things. Um, one other advantage I uh, with the development and the testing of the overall system. Okay, so we started out, we, uh, we took just our gripper blocks and we built uh, uh, about a half a dozen of them and we set up in our shop so that we could do uh, uh, many, many cycles of certain tests. So we tested uh, the way that they open and where they consistently open and uh, we did like literally thousands of cycles. And so uh, we found, for example, uh, that the first uh, design, the way uh, the, the uh, springs are inside there, they they failed after uh, a few hundred cycles. Yeah. And so we got looking closer and we saw that, that they were actually yielding at a point. So we redesigned the spring and, and redid the test again and uh, got up to uh, over 30,000 cycles. Um, so... You know, just just doing a few tests would never have revealed things like that. So yeah. we feel like we've we kind of went went uh, um, um, as far as we needed to go with proving the gripper blocks themselves. And uh, before we went ahead and we built a whole full size um, um, injector. Yeah. Uh, so that uh, right now that injector is over top of our test well, and we've uh, performed a lot of function tests. Uh, where we've uh, we've we've pulled heavy, we've uh, um, you know we've we've pulled up to uh, uh, eighty five ninety thousand pounds with it. Um, we've uh, pushed uh, fifty thousand pounds with it. Okay. Um, we've done you know cycles with uh, just on straight tubing. We've done lots of cycles with uh, couplings. Yeah. Um, passing through through the top through the bottom, all of that sort of stuff. Um, and we've done the uh, uh, control tests, meaning when uh, we, we, we tested to make sure that we could control, uh, for example, when we have a heavy load, yeah. um, we can actually hold it and control it with the injector, stop it if we have to. Um, and we've done the same in the opposite direction. So we've simulated pipe light and made sure that the injector can hold it you know, uh, hold it down just like a snubbing system does. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, we did a, uh, the balance point test. So we could actually see that we have good control over the, uh, tubing as we go from pipe light to pipe heavy or vice versa. So we've done a lot of that function testing and we're, we're confident in, uh, in the way the system works. Um, and actually, uh, just today we started doing the, um, high cycle testing and the plan is to do thousands of cycles um, by uh, you know uh, pulling at a intermediate to heavy load and then pushing to an intermediate to heavy load uh, uh, thousands of times um, and then the next set of testing will be is we're, we'll introduce um, uh, some contamination uh, basically some grit into the uh, into the system just to check the and see how how the system uh, handles with uh, wear and and uh, functionality in under that circumstance, and I would add by the way that we did test um, test the functionality of the gripper blocks at uh, minus thirty five to minus forty here uh, 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 back yeah. in January, yeah, and when we were uh, pleasantly surprised that uh, the grippers tended to um, um, always, uh, they would retract and they would come back to their home position, uh, just fine. Yeah. And when, and when you say contamination and grit into, in, into the system, you're primarily talking about the moving components of the gripper blocks. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and you know, uh, uh, like trying to simulate real world conditions as, as well as we can. Um, we have our we have our test well. We have a, a 500 foot test well, as you know, in our in our yard, and uh, so we're utilizing that to be able to uh, um, try to try to simulate real world as much as we can, um, so that we're we're totally confident when uh, when the end product goes in the field that it's going to do what we say it's going to do. Yeah, ab- absolutely, absolutely. It's been uh, you've done a really good job being up in Edmonton through the cold snaps and with the wind up there. Uh, I've only had to endure that a few times and, and doing the tours with clients and, and, and whatnot and potential clients yeah. up in that area. Um, yeah. Huge, huge amount of credit to the, to, uh, the guys working in the shop up there. I mean, I've yeah. been up there quite a bit, but they've been up there every single day and, and um, um, they're, they're uh, doing a great job living through that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay. So what, well, what's next overall then, uh, uh, other than the, the, the testing, I guess, um, w- what's, what's on the forecast for, for the units? Okay, so, well, um, you know, as you and Ron discussed there last week, there's uh, um, uh, a couple of different variations of the way that we'll uh, deploy the, the unit. Um, seems like probably the most likely deployment will be as a standalone system. Um, so it'll be designed in with the with the tong system, with the power swivel, uh, be able to uh, circulate, and the uh, uh, catwalk. Yeah. Um, I, I I think I think the most efficient uh, way to operate the system will be with the catwalk. It's not necessarily a necessity. I'm sure we could uh, simulate something similar to a, a jib like a typical snubbing unit uses. Yeah. Um, but uh, the overall system, I think, would be better with it. Yeah, okay. I, ju- I just want to uh, uh, say one thing. The way I look at this uh, machine is we're not trying to 